and hello everyone welcome back to another C++ tutorial so in today's tutorial we will be looking at exception handling now there are multiple ways you can do this and there are some better ways and some not so good ways you can do this but I'm going to show you the way I know how to do this let's do this now usually you would want to put something inside of a try and then catch block here it already did a ton of things for you but currently we don't have to worry too much about what most of this says I am just going to say throw to now by throwing to we don't need to specifically say this exception right here we can just say int e or e r r or e r r e r error no so that should be o r then so int error or e or e r r i usually like saying e r r or e and then here we can just say c out and e there are a lot of ways you can go about doing this i'm going to show you only the most basic way but you should take note that you can do a much more complex things with try and catch for example the example day gave us by default so when i said try it gave us this whole example thing that is something you can do and it's actually considered good practice but anyhow so what are we doing what even is exception handling now here is just a kind of way i've set things up so it just works our way first we're going to try and execute some code that will fail and throw the error to then when it fails it's going to catch that error and it's going to do something with that error in fact let's go here and say after error and then here we say before error now if I were to compile and run this you'll see we get before error to after error now by default when we get an error it will just crash the entire application so if I were to do this I can say terminate called or terminate called before throwing an instance of int aborted now you can imagine this being any sort of error happening we get our before error then the error happens and our code quits a lot of times you don't want this because you need your code to keep on running if an error happens just do something with that error but continue running the code afterwards and that is where try and catch comes in handy because we can try to do something and if nothing happens then good on us it can continue but if some sort of error occurs during the process of doing whatever code is in here then catch that code and do something with it on the side but afterwards still continue executing code for example here we can say if 10 is more than 5 then throw 5 and in here we can just say error and then just like hashtag to specify the error number that just happened so error and then hashtag 5 this can also be your way of putting your own error handling in your code by using the throw keyword this throw keyword will throw an exception it will throw an error so we can even make this a string if we wanted to and we can say some error and in here we can instead say std string instead of int and now and this should be a const char not a string const char there we go and i believe that could even be a pointer of some sort there we go so a const 
char pointer, which I believe we have covered a little bit. It's just basically a string. So that's all you need to know about it, but it's basically a string. And there we go. We were able to catch a string error that was thrown and we threw that error. We said if this happens, an error should be thrown because sometimes you might want to try and use an error that might be thrown by C++. For example, let's say you ask the user for input and they give you let's say their name but they were supposed to give you a number as an input you can then check is what they gave you a number if it's not then throw your own custom error to do something now of course you don't always know what type of error you're going to get so what you can also do is you can say dot 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 here this right here means whatever you catch it just can be anything, but we're going to handle all of those errors the same. So here we can say error. That's all we need to do. So no matter what we throw now, so throw, and let's say five, for example. So it either throws this error or it throws this error. If we were to run this, we'll still just get an error. It doesn't matter which one of these two errors gets thrown. It will just say error. This isn't the best way to go about doing things because then you have this problem of what error did just happen. It's a great way to work around something. Maybe you're busy testing and you just need to put some sort of error handling there for now. Then this can be great. But in an actual application, I don't know how good of practice this would be because you're just catching any error that comes your way just like with python when you say try and then catch or try and accept you should specify what error to accept the same can be said for this right here now that is about it i don't want to go too deep into error handling but this is one of the basic ways you can implement error handling into your code there are more complex ways, ways that I would actually recommend you do more, but we can maybe focus on something like that in a future video. But yeah, this is basic error handling, where you can use a try and catch block to try something and then throw your own exception. This is the best way to get used to them, is by throwing your own exceptions, by saying throw and then whatever you want to throw and in trying to work with that. And yeah, that's the most basics of error handling. Thank you all for watching. I hope you all enjoyed and I will see you all again in the next C++ tutorial.